I love stories about how grandma and grandpa saved money. We ha can learn so much from them and a lot of them are no longer with us. But on my channel, I have some amazing people who have watched some of my grandma's frugal tips and have put their stories in the comments. So today, I have taken the latest batch of those that I absolutely thought were so fun or thought-provoking and I want to share them with you. I guarantee you will learn something. You might shed a tear or two. And if you love hearing stories from long ago and how people used to live, make sure you click on that like button. The first one, I'm not going to try to pronounce some of these because I don't want to screw them up, so I'll just spell it. J-A-F-R-O-M-P-A -A, um, says, my mom used parts of old towels to make square pot holders. She would quilt them on the sewing machine. I still have some she made and I still use them. This is a great use for you know, old towels, maybe like the middle of washcloths gets the, for me at least, like the center of it fades out, but you could take, totally take the edge of it and use it to make a pot holder. I mean, pot holders these days don't last long anyway, so maybe taking some of your old towels is a, is a better use of that. One, two, three, Canada girl says, my mom grew up then during the Great Depression. She had me later in life too. She saved old clothes and towels and turned them into cleaning rags when they wore out. She washed and reused plastic food freezer bags. I still have her washer and dryer that's over 30 years old. This was the part of this comment that really got me. It's talking about um, planned obsolescence. And if you don't know what that is, is basically where things just don't last as long and that is on purpose. And then also a part to fix something is almost the cost of buying something brand new. So it just goes to show, I mean, she still has a washer and dryer that's 30 years old. She gets it serviced once a year. So again, another frugal tip from that time is to take care of your things. We moved into a new house in 2018. I think it was 2018, yes, we've been here four years. And we immediately, every six months, spring and, and fall, had have the AC unit, heating unit, serviced. Even though we know it's probably fine, at our previous house, which my husband, he had before me, and we lived in it for about 10 years total, or he did, um, he never had the air conditioning service. So when we did have it finally break down, the cost was astronomical. And I guarantee that the life of that thing would be longer if we had serviced it. So the fact that she services it once a year, she says she passed away, me and her mom, at nine, last year at 99. I am so sorry for your loss. 99 is a beautiful age to live to. And I am sure that she loved having you and it sounds, and you, you say in here, she was a wonderful and very caring person um, who loved to help out neighbors and friends. We need to remember those lessons. And so I hope that me saying this, what you, sharing your story passes on um, you know, that lesson that we need to be kind to others. Okay, the next one's from Pat Wagner. How are you, Pat? Love talking to you in the comments. I had to add, um, your comment here on this one. It says, last night we were assessing our expenditures, okay? So she's got, a, she lists out some great details. I have to share it. We have had a landline, you know, ring, ring, our entire lives. Recently, there's been a big change in our lives. We've decided to tighten the old belt, so to speak. Our landline phone was costing us $96.50 a month. See my eye twitching about that? <laughs> Only $51.50 of it was the actual phone. 45 is taxes and all sorts of other odd little changes. This is where I tell, tell people, I give the advice of look at your bills. Look at them. Don't stick your head in the sand. Look at them. See what you're being charged. See what you're really paying. Um, because that's ridiculous that 50% of the bill is taxes and other stupid little charges. She decided, she says, we decided $3.50 short of $100 a month for a landline was a luxury 
we can do without. We've got much more worthy places of $100 a month or $1,158 a year. She says that when I was a little girl, I was a little girl, when I outgrew clothes, we gave them to another little girl. It just made sense. Today, we dropped off 40, 24 cans of cat food to a close friend of ours. Our cats turned up their noses at the flavor. <laughs> Chewy refunded our money for it and said the, give the food away. A lot of places will, like if you call about something and you complain, a lot of places will just say keep it because otherwise they just, they would throw it away anyway and it's not worth sending back. So she did, gave it to a friend who needed it. Again, just made sense. My mom's parents lived in a primitive farmhouse where they raised their nine children. I loved spending time out at the farm. Grandma was born in 1896 and Grandpa in 1900. I learned a lot from them. The house didn't have central heating or indoor plumbing. Grandma cooked on a big old wood cook stove. The meals she made were wonderful. Again, another comment about cook uh, wood, wood stoves cooking delicious food. They lived frugally in every way. I am sure a lot of what I learned in life was thanks to Grandma and Grandpa. My dad was very frugal too. I'm sorry that I can't think of anything else specific that I was thought, but I caught up in tubes too in order to get every last bit. Pat, thank you for sharing that comment. I loved reading it and I love how you shared the details about the phone landline because if anybody else is hearing this, they will be likely, I guarantee you, at least one or two of them are going to go and look at their bills and look at the detail and see if it's actually worth it. Paula Estcourt says, my mother would keep old towels and when we had a baby, she would give us a dozen cloth nappies that had been cut up from her towels. A lot of our play clothes would be a pinafore dress that she made from old sheets or tablecloths. She used our cloth napkins to sew pockets on our pinafores and when we were out, went out to play, those old napkins made great scarves to protect our heads from the very hot Australian sun. Not to mention that these old, those old sheets, tablecloths, and napkins made great patches. My mother would embroider cute little flowers on the patches before attaching them to our dresses. In fact, during the 60s, I would attach embroidered patches to my jeans. Groovy, baby. <laughs> I love that. I love that time. You remember when they used to do, I think I go back to Punky Brewster. I remember that. Her, uh, you know, those little like, rainbow and smiley face patches that she put on your, your backpack. I just loved that so much. And nobody had an issue with it. I think if people wore these types of dresses now, I, they would be made fun of. Um, it is sad, but that's all that they had back then so they ha they had to do it but think about what her mother did by adding in little hand touches that made them special and she's not sharing her story in a way where she's saying oh, my mom made me wear this this is what we had to wear she's sharing her story in a loving appreciative way kathy irvine shares her story I remember my great grandparents when I was little. They had no electricity, running water, or bathroom. So if you've never experienced that, just imagine how you would feel. <laughs> That's the way life was. She says she remembers the outhouse, yuck. Yeah, I'm sure that's kind of gross. <laughs> she had the well, um, had a well on the covered back porch to get water, and she cooked on a wood stove. She made the very best meals. I've heard this about people who cook on a wood stove. That they, they, it just makes really good food. She says, I loved playing with the chickens, ducks, cows, and the horses. That sounds like a dream, that part of it. It was cool in the house in the summer and warm in the winter. Old feathered beds, I didn't like, but it was comfy. She lived to see my only daughter. That was a blessing. When I got married, she knitted me blankets and canned me a lot of food for the recipes, with the recipes. She also covered my wire hangers with her crocheting. I miss her greatly, and I know I will see her in heaven. P.S. She always sat on the front porch in the summer and read us the Holy Bible and explained it to us that I was very blessed by her. 
and explained it to us. I was very blessed by her and her knowledge. She was 99 when she finally made it home. Thank you, Jennifer. God bless you. Yeah, she made it home. And if you're new to my channel, stories like these get me because I'm very empathetic and I feel people's emotions. Um, it's not always a good thing when I do, um, but I, I can I can read it, people's energy and I feel very <laughs> empathetic. And I just love the conviction of, of, of people and the heart of you all who watch my channel. Love it. Susan Bartlett writes, my grandmother was born in 1909. I remember two things in particular. She used fillers for meals, but not like you described. There was always a sliced tomato or cucumber or maybe an apple on the table. And there was always a combo veggie as a side. If she had a serving of butter beans and a serving of corn left over from a previous meal, she would combine them to make a new side. Those were her feelers. So when I had talked about in another video how um, to stretch meat, they would add fillers like oats or potatoes or like uh, powdered potatoes to meats like meatloaf, etc., and make it go further, stretch the meat. So she's talking about fillers you know, things to fill you up, additional foods, you know, having that apple or that cucumber or that tomato, little things, extra things on the table. Who's to say you just have to have a meat, a carb, and a vegetable? Why can't you have a little bit of meat, a carb, a vegetable, another vegetable, a fruit, to fill you up, to give you more nourishment, and it's a more variety of foods? Don Harris had a great comment. And it's something we don't think about. So in this, in that video I made, or one of the videos, I talk about how people just don't do things the same. They don't help their neighbors out the same. They don't sit there and talk to their neighbors the same. However, she says the community you describe is alive and well in my rural mountain community. Neighbors are always handling things around or asking if you need something that no, that you're no longer using. We all shop at thrift stores, but donations are filtered through the community first before donating. We make meals for each other. So meaning as far as donations, they check to see if their neighbor needs something before they donate it to a thrift store. We make meals for each other. We watch each other's animals, bring mail in, plow driveways. People are here are many times only one generation removed from the depression. So it is not old news. My grandparents were young teens then, and I grew up hearing the stories regularly. My grandfather always said he had no idea how poor they were until he was an adult because they always had enough to do, enough to eat, they lived on a farm, and everyone was in the same boat. I think those lessons can be applied today. Wherever one lives, and having a supportive community is key. You may need to be the person to get it started by giving things and doing things for others without expecting anything in return. But I would be surprised if you did not generate a community that reciprocates in time. Thanks for this meaningful video. Dawn, thank you for the beautifully written comment here. I, I, I don't know what age you were. Your grandparents were teens during the Great Depression, but maybe we're around the same age. I'm just, I think, I, you've just written it beautifully. You've said it so beautifully. Somebody has to start it. You know, you were talking about how your grandfather had no idea how poor they were. The invention of social media has really made people, and it's not even that we, we that the actuality is that people's lives are the way you see them on Instagram, because it's not. It's filtered. But it has made people feel less than that's made them feel you know like your your grandfather felt poor he didn't feel poor until he knew something different you know the fish doesn't know that there's water because he's never been in anything other than water you know that saying um so nowadays we do but at some point you know there are these people that live this way right the the the, the rural ta towns there are plenty of these things in the United States, but you just don't know about them. They're not shown on the news. They're not shown on social media, but they do exist. 
and people still support each other there. Okay, Veronica Gilmore says, my dad didn't live through the Great Depression, but he grew up dirt poor on a very tiny island in the Caribbean. He slept on a bed made of banana leaves. I just thought this was such a different and unique um, story that I just had to share Veronica's story. He didn't have any shoes until he was eight years old. Imagine this now. I mean, these are stories we have to pass on. People aren't gonna believe this kind of stuff. They're gonna think it's just movies. No, it was reality. Um, he always told me to plant a garden. And even though I grew up in New York City, we always had a small garden in the backyard. Now that he's gone, I wish I could ask him more tips. Chokes me up because I wish the same. He also taught me about cutting open bottles to get the last bit out. Oh yeah, I do that. <laughs> I'll take the lotion bottle and I will <laughs> until I can get the last bit out. Um, she still does that now. She also saves meat bones and veggie scraps and makes her own bone broth, which she learned from a friend. It really helps stretch those meals in multiple ways. Celine Saldamondo, <laughs> if I said your last name wrong, I'm so sorry. She has a uh, a great comment. She says, good evening, Jennifer. Even though I am a mindful consumer, I still feel we are a little bit of brats. Yes. Yes. We have so much and sometimes I see people complaining about the most ridiculous things. Yes. You just want to shake them. When you are mindful of these stories and you hear these stories, more consistently you start to see and appreciate more of what's going on around you and you start to see more bratish behavior in others. It's ridiculous the amount, like somebody the other day was telling me a story about there was, these are high schoolers and it's a softball game and the family or the families of the team that didn't win, the adults were berating the children. <laughs> I don't know what I would do in that situation. I would want to shake that person that is ridiculous and they're they're raising children to think that behavior is acceptable and you can treat another god child a god's child like that is disgusting so yeah i could go off on a tangent on that one but she says you know people complaining about the most ridiculous thing she says her grandparents had very little money and were very happy and made things work out somehow I would love to have had time to talk to her as an adult. The idea of sharing our, sta our, our, our staff, friends and neighbors is the best. Our stuff with friends and neighbors is the best. We do that all the time. It's just so nice to help out each other. Yeah, when you do act of kindness, acts of kindness, um, I think it's Rachel Cruz, which is Dave Ramsey's daughter, who says, giving is the most fun you could do with money. Even if you don't just give money, you give things, you give time. Um, it is the most heartwarming. So what you do to make your heart happy, those are the things. It isn't, it isn't to get that feeling, that, that good uh, energy through you isn't going and buying things unless you're buying them for somebody who's in need. Um, but giving is where you really feel it in your heart. Waterfall Peace says, thank you for your videos. Thank you for watching. My family member passed their maternity clothes to me. I was so grateful. We also shared baby clothes and passed them to the next family in need of them. It saved us a lot of money and a wonderful was a wonderful memory. My grandmother hand sewn baby quilts for babies in the family. She hand sewn lap quilts for the nursing homes. She also made marriage quilts. She never sold them. She wanted to help others. She lived through the depression and taught me so much. Food scraps went into a bucket each day. <laughs> I would put these scraps around her fruit trees to fertilize. The used oil from cooking bacon, we would put in a can to be used for another meal. When she, but basically if you don't know, they will take that um, like bacon grease and they use that as like butter or like um, in a pan to keep things from sticking and to add flavor. Um, she says when she lived with us, she was older. She wanted to help in the kitchen while we were working together in the kitchen, we enjoyed our talks for days. She put hot soapy water into a bowl and that's what she used to wash dishes. So she didn't um, you fill up the sink. She put it into a bowl to save water. 
I asked why and she said it was she was used to not wasting water. She used to go around the yard to pump water for the day for use and continued to conserve. I admire that and I cherish what she taught me. You have some amazing memories. You will never forget and I bet she will never forget. You sitting there in the kitchen talking. Ada Bequero, Bequero, I'm not, I'm, if I'm saying your name, last name wrong, I'm so sorry, B-A-Q-U-E-R-O. I love your name, Ada. I had a, a great grandmother named Ada. Um, she, uh, we are immigrants from South America. I had to sh share this. Listen, we were never poor in South America. We were middle class in my country, but we had to escape for other reasons to New York. Thanks to my mom who always worked, the bills were always paid and had enough healthy food to eat. I now wonder how she did it. Mom was incredibly organized when grocery shopping and managed to give us treats like jam and cheese. I don't remember ever feeling hungry and was always felt safe. And I always felt safe where we lived. I now remember one Thanksgiving, she bought such a big turkey that it did not fit in the oven. <laughs> that Thanksgiving, we laughed about it and had leftovers for four months. I don't even buy turkey now. Most of us don't like it. I've learned to plan meals and if anything is left over, we recycle them into um, fritigas, fritig, uh, fritters, uh, made of leftover rice, beans, vegetables, and sweet fried plantains. Oh, I love some fried plantains. You add one egg, shape into the you add one egg into the patty patty's pan fry until crispy they turn out delicious I'll, i've never lacked food but i never wasted food either thanks to my mom's organizational skills which apparently i learned so my point in all of this is we have to pass along these stories we have to share them we can't bottle them up it's hard to tell a teenager these stories now they don't listen and I, I you know back when I was younger and I had my grandparents around I didn't have any need or want to talk about the old days so anybody who has those stories you're blessed to have them but we need to share them and not forget the history and how we got here and how things have changed and how you know we can learn lessons and heartfelt memories and one of the underlying themes you will see in these messages are the feelings of love of love between people between family between friends and how love can carry you through hard times i hope you enjoyed this video again if you have any of these stories please leave them down below i love reading them if you enjoyed this video make sure you to give it a thumbs up and don't forget if you haven't done so already to subscribe to my channel Thank you.